Royal Air Force 100. Brilliant! Today, of course, but he can make this thing do the most amazing manoeuvres. And you're going to see him later when this, we put four extras together with the Global Stars team. He's finding some height, Max. On goes the smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Jeffries. He can do things with aeroplanes that you can only dream of. The great news about that manoeuvre that high means the cloud base has really lifted. Well, with a steerman, as you might imagine, with Americans, you get a lot more bang for your bucks. It's a big machine. Well, it's a warm welcome to Sue Girdler, who is flying the steerman today. And I'm very proud to have known Sue and her family from way back in the 1980s. I was privileged to work for her father-in-law, former Red Arrows pilot, Ted Girdler who uh, had a very successful flying school and was part of the Air Cadet Flying School. Here they come, if you look to your left, along the crowd line now. A little bit of aviation training history here at Air. So, the Bulldog, furthest away from you, Chipmunk. And again, the most... both of these aeroplanes designed to do the same job. We'll talk you through the differences between them. Chipmunk, incredibly long Royal Air Force service. In fact, you could say it's still going. We promised you extras four times. Here we go, the global stars. Now, take a look at the smoke. Take a look at the way it's dotted. On off, on off, on off. It's not Morse code, folks. It's very, very clever. Now, I know you found today that I'm completely banjacked by new technology. But I can tell you that that smoke is controlled from the lead aeroplane. Hold the 
global stars for good reason. In the last two years, they've displayed in New Zealand, Australia, China. They were there only very recently. India, the Middle East, and across Europe. And of course, most importantly, here in Earth. Walls around them. Canadian Vickers in Quebec served with the Royal Canadian Air Force then it became a fire bomber dropping retardant on forest fires in the 1960s it did the same in France with the Protection Civile before returning to Canada and then it's brought here to delight uh, display audiences all over the place but most importantly here at Earth. ladies and gentlemen I give you the plane sailing Catalina A magnificent machine. Now it appears in the colours of an air rescue unit, the 5th Emergency Recovery Squadron, and it's called Miss Pickup. In the Second World and they War, were used by Catalina, uh, and had he not been rescued, he would not have lived till, I think she said, well into his 90s. So we salute the Catalina today and we pay tribute to that lady's grandfather who was rescued and asked me to mention it. What a lovely sight. Got those cameras ready. And also we're listening to the harmony of Pratt & Whitney radial engines once again. We had radials and, with the uh, Dakota Air Force training. We can see the dragonfly in the front there, that very unique shape little passenger plane, twin engine and the single engine running along behind, giving us a view of the sight and sound. Now just, oh. just, just look at the difference in the interpretation of how you move executives and, and high flown... Long after uh, the Americans had developed nose wheel aircraft, we were a little slow to improve our design, rather old fashioned if you like. Old-fashioned Britain may have been in their day. Scottish International Air Show, the Chippy, the Chipmunk. It's de Havilland once again who built the aircraft with the uh, Dragonfly we've just seen from the same factory. A little bit later on, this is a return of this ubiquitous training aircraft the RAF had so many of, as did the Royal Canadian Air Force, the New Zealand Air Force, Australia, South Africa, Hong Kong, many university air squadrons. You couldn't make it up. You can't couldn't it. make that up. Even you couldn't make no, that no, up. No. She's up in front of us, coming in high up, ladies and gentlemen. From the south, Lauren Wilson in the Pitts S1. Keep your eye on this wonderful lady. On goes the smoke. Get ready for this arrival. Twist, 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 twist. Corkscrew across the sky. Lawrence from Wales. And she's a very, very 
very determined lady. At 16 she left school and decided that perhaps the usual route for a, a woman was not for her. She became an apprentice engineer. Then she took a private pilot's license and at the age of 22 she became the British female aerobatic champion and you look at her now and you know why. Her debut air show season is 2013 and as I said earlier later this year she takes up her, her role as co-pilot number two with Flybe on Bombardier Q400 twin turbo props. Holding it on the prop Dropping back through her own smoke. Bumped into Lauren recently down in Kent, and she was looking for a 28 volt starter. There she comes. Did I? And I think we're ready for an airwave, folks. Lauren Wilson.
It's a flat display, but this is still going to be full of punch. Ladies and gentlemen, the F-18 Swiss Airborne. Flagship Blue Angels display team. 